Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are picking up right where we left off. We put the, let's see, oh, I gotta open the vent valve. We put some yogurt in the freeze dryer to run an experiment to see if we can make yogurt bites, the ones that you can purchase in the store. They should be done now, so I am excited to pull them out and see how they go. I tried this once with, what's it called? Greek yogurt, and it completely was a complete flop. They turned to powder. As soon as you touch them, they turned to powder, and this is just regular yogurt, plain yogurt with some raspberry jam in it, and they're actually holding up. Mmm. That is so interesting. I've never eaten a yogurt bite, a freeze-dried yogurt bite before. Wow. That's great. And then I also freeze-dried some cereal yogurt bites. This has some sprouted Kamut in it. And I freeze-dried it in these silicone molds as a snack. And we'll see how this goes. Look at that. That's incredible. So we need to get these inside and packaged up so they don't get rehydrated. I think this is gonna be a perfect little snack for my nieces and nephews or for me when I just need something quick. That is awesome. My sister is the one who asked me to do the yogurt bites for my niece and we experimented with Greek yogurt and it was an absolute flop, but this works perfectly. Look at that. That's awesome. These are very expensive to purchase and that was so easy to make. So we've got that and then we have one more experiment over here. So I need this to do a defrost cycle so I'm gonna leave that open. And then over here we have some vanilla beans that I had made vanilla extract out of. I had got two rounds of vanilla extract out of these vanilla beans, and I didn't want to compost them or throw them away. I wanted to dehydrate them, and we are going to make something pretty cool out of these. So let's go and let's get all this inside and get all of this taken care of. I also have a ton of other recipes we're going to be testing today. Today is going to be a kitchen day in the kitchen, doing a ton of recipe testing. The first thing I want to do today is get the yogurt bites packaged up because I don't want them to start reabsorbing moisture from the air. Freeze dried things, if you want to store them for 20 plus years long term storage, you need to store them in a mylar bag. That's not what I use my freeze dried goods for. I don't plan to store anything for that long of term. So I just store them. I do still want to be gentle with them because they still can break. I just want to store them until they get snacked on and are gone. And so I'm going to store them in a just mason jar with a nice tight lid. Now I'm going to jar up these cereal yogurt bites. If I can get them out of these silicone bags. And I'm just going to put this into a quart bag or a quart mason jar. You know what? I don't, I think I'm going to need another half gallon. So the other experiment or recipe testing we're going to do today is doing some bread recipe testing. So I want to have a recipe that I know that if I put a raw dough into the freezer, I can pull it out and let it rise and bake with it. So I want to try to experiment and come up with a really good recipe for rolls and for sandwich bread. I already know how to freeze pizza dough and have it come out and thaw it and make a delicious pizza. And I want to do some experimenting and come up with a really good recipe for rolls and for sandwich bread. And the, or, and, or I think I want to try doing French bread too, because French bread dough is really cool because you can pull that out and kind of make it into other things. Like you could pull French bread dough out of the freezer and turn it into cinnamon rolls or garlic knots or something other than just French bread. Because you can buy the frozen roads dough in the store and I kind of want to just make a homemade version of that. 
And I spent some time yesterday researching how to do that and there was some conflicting methodologies out there. So I'm gonna try a couple of the different methodologies and see which one works the best. Two perfect gifts for my nieces. One project done and now we are going to go to the next project which is these vanilla beans and I did try to scrape the beans out of the pods and everything was just too dry and brittle. You can see here these are the vanilla seeds and I wanted to scrape them out. When vanilla beans are fresh it's really easy to scrape the seeds out of the pods so I end up giving up on this and I end up just throwing the entire pod into the sugar. If you were going to use fresh vanilla beans, I would probably only put like five vanilla beans for one gallon of sugar. I'm putting a ton because I'm just using all the ones I have. These were spent vanilla beans that made vanilla extract and I would just toss them. And so this is just an experiment to see if I can get one more use out of my vanilla beans. someone or if you like putting sugar in your coffee how good would this be in your coffee I don't put sugar in my coffee I like just a lot of cream but this would be a perfect gift for either gifting to yourself or gifting to someone who you know likes putting sugar in their coffee and loves the flavor of vanilla so I'm just burying these vanilla beans Probably good because I do want to be able to shake it around a little bit. I want to knock a ton of those seeds loose. I might put this somewhere where I can see it and every, oh yeah, this, the, the, the seeds are already starting to incorporate a little bit. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. But I think I'm going to put it somewhere where I can see it and every... I don't know, a couple days, I'll just come around and give it a good shake. I don't have any plans to use this right away. I think this is going to need to infuse for a while. I think if I was using fresh vanilla beans, it wouldn't need to infuse that long, but these are dehydrated, so I'm going to give it a good, I don't know, month. I can already smell the vanilla. Maybe two months of infusing before I attempt to use that. Second project done for the day. While I'm here, I'm going to just refill my sugar bucket and then I can put this five gallon bucket away. This that here. This that here. So we're going to be making a lot of bread. A lot of bread today. Good thing we like bread around here. Hopefully most of it turns out. If, if the recipes that I test don't turn out, if they become flops, I can turn them either into breadcrumbs, which I don't have any breadcrumbs in my kitchen right now, or if they're horrible, then I can give them to the chickens. But I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think they will be salvageable to some degree. So the, the couple of recipes that I printed off are my go-to one hour buttery dinner rolls, which are so good. My sister's French bread recipe. And then I want to try an Amish white bread, like sandwich bread recipe as well. So I've got three recipes here. Which one should we start with? See this resource that I found online said you need to double the yeast. Use only active dry yeast, not fast acting yeast, which that's what I use in my 
pizza dough that I freeze, so that makes sense. Make spread according to the recipes except for doubling the amount of yeast. And this one does say to allow the bread to rise one time, punch it down, shape it, freeze it. I don't ever do that with my pizza dough recipe, so that is another thing that we're going to experiment. And then this resource said, this was from King Arthur's website, they said make the recipe exactly like you would and do not let it rise. Throw it in the freezer, except for you will use cold water instead of warm water when activating your yeast, which is what I do when I make my pizza dough. I don't use warm water because I don't want it rising at all in my freezer. I want it to go from the kitchen into the freezer. So I have just in my head figured out what we're going to do here. I need a pen. We're going to do one where we double the yeast and we do one full rise shape it and then freeze it. One, we are going to make it exactly like we would, except we're gonna use cold water, shape it, throw it directly into the freezer. So the first recipe we're gonna do is going to be the dinner rolls. Because who doesn't love hot dinner rolls? Straight out of the oven. And what could be better than having the convenience of homemade ones frozen in the freezer? Let me get out all the ingredients for this. So this is the first two batches of rolls we're gonna be doing with two different variations. And as I'm working through this, recipe testing is something that it can be overwhelming, it can be fun, it can be a challenge, it can be surprising, and it kind of evolves as time goes on. So when I first started making these rolls, I thought I only needed to do two different variations to test. And then I thought, you know what, I'm already in the kitchen. We're gonna end up doing four different variations on this dough. And that's gonna give me that much more information moving forward. So on this day, what we do is we make a bunch of dough we, in different forms. I'll walk you through it as we do it. And then we are gonna freeze the dough and bake it and see what happens. In my mind, I thought I knew which variation of these four was going to do the best, and I was completely disproven. <laughs> and that's why recipe testing is important and fun and also challenging. It can be a lot of work trying to keep all of this straight. Post-it notes are my best friend when it comes to recipe testing. I try to keep post-it notes on all the bowls and cookie sheets as I am going through this recipe testing process. So I've got our wet mixture here and then we're going to mix in our dry mixture to these and then i do enlist the help of the kitchen aid mixer because i want the kitchen aid mixer to be working for me while i keep working on other starting other batches so the way it works is i usually go through and do this where i will test a bunch of different methods on a recipe and then I, I figure out which one works the best for me. And then I try to duplicate it quite a few times just to make sure that I can duplicate the recipe myself. And then I usually will give the recipe to some family members or some friends and I say, hey, can you test this recipe? Follow it exactly and see if you can duplicate it. And that is how this ends up going. So I wanna make sure I get all the ingredients out of here. So I'm gonna scrape out the honey and this is just one batch of one variation that I'm getting mixed up here. And then while this ends up going into the KitchenAid mixer to knead, I will get going and finishing out the second variation of this recipe. I'm gonna have my KitchenAid knead this for me so I can get going on the next thing while this is working for me. So we can be a little bit more efficient in the kitchen. I normally like to knead things by hand, but when I'm making this many things, we're going to take advantage of modern conveniences. Would help if it was plugged in.
we go. You can see how bubbly and ready to go this yeast is. This is the doubled yeast and that is very ready. So let's get going on this recipe. While my KitchenAid is kneading my dough for me, I am gonna get going on this one. Now, when I was researching the different ways to do this, I, I mentioned that there were conflicting information online. And I think that conflicting information comes from depending on what recipe you're using. Because some of the recipes that I end up testing do need the doubled yeast, some don't. The doubled yeast, what the online resources were saying is that you're accounting for the yeast that dies during the freezing process because you've activated the yeast in the dough. I put yeast, dry yeast in my freezer all the time and it doesn't kill it. But what has happened is when we are using it in a recipe, we're activating the yeast out of its dormant state and then we're freezing it. So that does end up killing some of the yeast. So. What surprised me is some recipes needed that doubled yeast and some did not. And I think what the biggest factor in that was is the amount of sugar and fat the dough has. And that is what is affecting whether you need the doubled yeast or just the standard amount of yeast. So this one's been kneading for the correct amount of time. So I'm gonna get this out. And this dough is cold, which is good because that's what we want for this recipe and then this warm dough I'm gonna get in there and let that knead while I shape this dough each one of these recipes makes 12 rolls and so I like to quarter my dough and then I cut each quarter into thirds and that tends to be the easiest way I can try to get evenly shaped rolls out of my dough. Sometimes they're a little bit, some are bigger, some are smaller. You could use a scale to measure, but I am not that precise. This has been kneading long enough. So while I shape the rest of these, I'm gonna get this dough out. I think I'm gonna do one more test. I think I'm gonna do three batches total, but this needs to rise one time. So it's kind of working out perfect that while I'm waiting for one thing, I can do another thing. So we're able to get in here and this is probably gonna be the first of many different rounds of me testing these different recipes. This is how recipe testing goes or recipe development. It's a lot of just trial and error. And the fun thing is usually you get something pretty good to eat. Usually nothing flops too big. So I'm going to use my beeswax wrap. I'm going to put this over the top and I do need to start marking down what is what so I don't forget because that would be a tragedy. So taking notes is so important. So I need to say that this is the one hour rolls. Warm water. Rise once and double the yeast. So I need to start marking down what everything is. I do definitely need to do one more. I'm realizing I need to follow this recipe exactly, but not double the yeast. But this recipe here is one hour rolls, followed the recipe, yeast, but use cold water, And we did not, oh, we did not rise. No rise. I'm just gonna keep that here because that's what these are. So now I'm gonna shape these rolls. Now this recipe is cold water, the standard amount of yeast for the recipe, and I did not let these rolls go through a first rise. I made them. I needed them and now I'm shaping them and I'm gonna put them directly into the freezer. This is how I make my pizza dough and my pizza dough turns out perfect every time. I use coldish water, not cold, it's just room temperature water. It's not, you know, 110 degrees. I'm not trying to activate the yeast and have my pizza dough go through a first rise. So I assumed this right here was going to be the method that worked the best for these rolls. And I'm surprised 
and you will find out when we go to bake them that this is not the preferred method for these rolls. And the difference between my pizza dough and my one hour roll dough is there is butter and milk in this recipe. In the pizza dough, there's no butter or milk. Now I am shaping them and I'm gonna get them on this cookie sheet. I do spray the bottom of the cookie sheet just with a little bit of nonstick spray and we end up spraying the top too just so that the rolls don't dry out. Look how cute and perfect. So I'm gonna spray these with a little bit of cooking spray, just avocado spray, so they don't dry out. So how this recipe testing goes is we are gonna test these different ways, and I realize I am gonna do actually two more batches in, with two different ways we're gonna do it. Right here I have cold liquid, the correct amount of yeast. Here I have warm liquid with double the amount of yeast and rice time. I want to do one where I do warm with the correct amount of yeast and rise one time. And then I want to do where I double the yeast and I do it all cold. So that way I have all the different scenarios basically. And once I bake them, or we rise them, we bake them and we figure out which ones do the best. Then I take that recipe, that new recipe, and I try that a few times just to make sure it's duplicatable. So this now is gonna go straight into the freezer because these are cold rolls and they have not risen at all yet. And this is probably not done yet. So I'm still waiting for this to rise. I think I'm gonna make the other two batches of rolls. And I need to put my, my note on here into the oven it goes. Or, why do I keep saying that? Into the freezer it goes. While I'm in my freezer, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a freezer meal, I think, because I'm gonna be doing all of this cooking. I don't want to cook dinner tonight. So I'm gonna grab two of these pasties. We made these in the postpartum freezer meals. These are so yummy. They're filled with beef and potatoes and carrots and onions and a homemade pastry and they're just delicious and that's gonna be the easiest dinner for me to heat that up in the oven. All right, so I'm going to now make up the liquid mixture for making two more batches. So this is a little bit kind of a just behind the scenes of when testing recipes, how it goes. It's kind of tedious. It's basically a science experiment, and it's a whole lot of fun. I really enjoy doing this. Normally, when I do recipe testing, I'm kind of in the kitchen by myself, and so this is a lot more fun having you in the kitchen with me while I do this recipe testing. Okay, so two more tablespoons of butter melting. We've got our milk, and I'm gonna do the same thing. The one that I'm gonna double the yeast, I am going to use the big one and the one where I'm doing the regular amount of yeast, I'm gonna do the small one just so that in my brain I can remember that. Before I even get started, I'm gonna write down what these two different recipes are gonna be so that I don't forget because it is a lot of work to try to remember all these little details in my head. These are ready to shake. The dough has doubled in size. So I want to get these shaped before I make up the rest of the dough. This definitely rose a lot faster, which makes sense because it had double the yeast in it. So it's going to go a lot faster just from the presence of extra yeast.
I'm gonna have to get multiple batches on this one cookie sheet. So, I'm, I just put a mark on here. Oh, I probably didn't make that quite big enough. Not gonna have my rolls touch that. I just need that there so that I can then put some more rolls on this side. And I wanna put my little post-it note right here. Now these are gonna go in the freezer. I have a feeling that doubling the yeast is not necessary, but time will tell. And now those rolls are heading into the freezer and we're gonna get going on the next recipe or same technical recipe, but different variations of it. So I've got my two bowls here and I definitely went through a tremendous amount of flour throughout these recipe testing. Now this is just the one hour dinner rolls and the reason why I wanted to do this is because I told you I didn't think you would need to double the yeast. Well, doubling the yeast is definitely a important factor when it comes to this in particular recipe when you want to freeze the dough. If you don't want to freeze the dough, then you know follow the recipe to the T. But if you want to freeze the dough, doubling the yeast is the way to go. I also do the same process with a French bread recipe and the one recipe that gave me the biggest troubles that I had to make so many times was the bread recipe. I wanted a sandwich bread recipe that I could have the frozen dough in the freezer, pull it out, and I could make some sandwich bread or slicing bread whenever I wanted. And I had to make that recipe probably 15 times. <laughs> and I finally got it down. It's just funny how some of the recipes were very straightforward. The pizza dough recipe was by far the easiest. I've been doing that for many years. And it was so straightforward to get a nice, good pizza dough that I could freeze, pull out of the freezer and use it whenever I wanted. The French bread recipe was pretty straightforward as well. The roll recipe surprised me, but we ended up with a really good one. And then the sandwich bread recipe definitely gave me a run for my money. And so I'm really grateful though that I took the effort to do this because having frozen dough in the freezer with homemade bread is an awesome thing to have. It feels like a luxury to have fresh bread. And now with going through the effort of testing all these recipes, I can have it at a much more convenient pace by having the dough frozen and not having to go through the effort of kind of, you know, making the recipe the day I want to eat it. That's the thing. It's not hard to make bread, but you know, you get flour on the counter and flour on the floor and there's just a few extra steps. So having it frozen in the freezer is really nice. I am working on a PDF where all these recipes can be found but I don't have that done quite yet. So if you want to be the first to know when that comes out, I can leave a link for my email. My newsletter is where I will announce that the final product is done. It is, I've got all the recipes now finally buttoned up and figured out, but making the actual document is gonna take me just a little bit of time. And so if you are interested in filling your freezer with all these homemade goody doughs that you can bake for a random Tuesday night or for a dinner party and they are absolutely delicious, go ahead and look at the link that will be down in the description box. These two variations are gonna go in the freezer just like the other two. I'm gonna spray them with a little bit of nonstick spray and cover them with some plastic wrap and they are heading into the freezer. I went ahead and I typed up what I did and I'm going to label, I already have labels out there but it's just my chicken scratch with post-it notes and I wanna make sure I keep really good records of what I'm doing here. So one of the recipes, I used warm water, I had allowed it to rise, and I used the regular amount of yeast. The second one, I used warm water, 
I allowed it to rise once and I doubled the yeast. So that's kind of like the first one where we used warm water and allowed it to rise. The second way I did it is I used cold water, I didn't let it rise, and I used regular yeast, one tablespoon, and then, not regular yeast, but one the regular amount of yeast. So basically I made it how I would normally make dough to put in the freezer. And then the second way, I used cold water, I didn't allow it to rise, and I doubled the yeast. So I have four tests out there. I'm gonna go label them. I'm not gonna attempt to make any of these rolls until tomorrow, because I wanna make sure they're totally, totally frozen. So we have one hour rolls, cold liquid, no rise time, one tablespoon of yeast. I'm keeping my post-it notes with this just so that I just make sure everything stays nice and separated. I can just tell by looking at these two that the ones that I used warm liquid and allowed to rise once, they are bigger. Even after flattening them down and shaping them, they're, this, these are almost frozen, these are the first ones we did, but they are bigger in size than the ones where we used cold water and we didn't allow to rise at all. So we've got one, two, three, four recipes ready to go in the freezer and then I will thaw them out tomorrow and bake them. And the kitchen's already dirty. I have dinner ready, we're gonna have pasties, but I need to get some breakfast. I already pulled out of the freezer, this is something I love to keep in my freezer as well, is some pie crust and we have abundance of eggs. This is just some of the eggs I have right now. So I'm going to take advantage of this dirty bowl and this dirty countertop to make some quiche. I'm really excited with the progress. I thought we were gonna get three recipes in the freezer, but then I expanded how many different variations I wanted to do. So it makes sense to kind of pull back and kind of focus on one thing at a time. So that's what I'm doing, focusing on one thing at a time. So I am going to roll out the pie pastry first. My goal is to learn how to have all my own bread, homemade bread recipes in the freezer so that whenever I want a homemade bread product, I have homemade my own in the freezer. This has been a game changer to learn how to make pie crust and keep it in the freezer. I don't wanna make pie crust every time I wanna make a quiche or a pie, but if I have my homemade in the freezer and I know how to make it, put it in the freezer and thaw it and use it and have it turn out beautifully, that's what I want for rolls, pizza dough, sandwich bread, and all the bread products. And maybe even one day hamburger buns and hot dog buns, but it's a process of learning how to get to that point and recipe testing and recipe testing takes time. And so we'll, I'll get there, we'll get there, we'll learn together, we'll figure it out, and then we will have our freezer filled with all these homemade beautiful goodies to make our lives easier. Because I'm gonna get this quiche whipped up in a matter of literal minutes here. I just preheated the oven, I probably should have done that before I rolled out the pie crust, but that's Fine. I have some pre-cooked bacon. I'm just dicing up. Pre-cooked bacon in the freezer is one of the best convenience food items and sausage too. I love having pre-cooked bacon and sausage so that when I want to throw together a quiche or something or top salads or make a quick pasta sauce using bacon, I don't have to go through the effort of cooking it. Because cooking bacon is not my favorite thing to do and so it's nice when I have a bunch of it done. One of my new favorite things too is also to have home shredded cheese in my freezer. Well, I only have up here mozzarella and I don't want to put mozzarella in this so I'm just going to shred up a little bit of cheddar cheese just because I like that flavor in quiche better than mozzarella. So we're going to get this in here and I'm just going to take a minute to shred it. Probably I'm going to put probably about a cup of cheese. I don't usually measure too much when I make I usually put about a cup of cheese, a cup of milk, seven eggs, salt, pepper, um, sausage or bacon, and then whatever veggies I have on hand that need to be used up. 
I have got currently some summer squash and zucchini that need to be used, so that's what I'm gonna put in here. Normally I would dice my zucchini and summer squash, but since I have the grater out, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just grate this right into it. We'll give that little extra to the chickens. just ran out of black pepper upstairs so I'm gonna grab a thing of black pepper down here and I, I need to get a master list of things when I run out because this is the last black pepper I have down here so that I can know that I need to order more black pepper while I'm down here I'm going to grab out some steaks to thaw I am having a barbecue we have some family that's coming into town tomorrow and so this weekend I'm gonna have people over for a barbecue and I'm gonna make kebabs with steak I have never made kebabs before so I'm excited to give them a try I've got some New York steak I think I'm gonna do I looked up a recipe with a really yummy marinade we're gonna make a bunch of sides a bunch of dessert <laughs> a bunch of yummy stuff but I figured while I'm down here I might as well get the meat out to thaw because going to take I'm just going to throw it in the fridge and it'll take a couple days there are going to be how many of us um this has three steaks in it this has two this has two and I think there's going to be eight so two four uh two four six seven maybe I'll get one more out I am going to cut the fat off when I make these so I want to make sure I have enough and maybe a little extra for leftovers. So this is just a little bit of meal prep. These are steaks that I got from the rancher who lives about 20 minutes north of me where I buy my beef from. Generally, 99% of the beef comes from him that we consume. And so I want to get these thawing. So perfect. I like to do about half a pound at a time. I just put that into the, a blender. Perfect fit. You can see that right here, the crust is a little bit low and I don't want that to overboil or boil over. So I'm just gonna fold it up just a little bit to make a little bit higher crust there. And do the same thing right here. I have enough crust bent over there. I wanna make sure that the egg stays, stays in the quiche. So this might not be the prettiest quiche I've ever made, but it's gonna taste really good. Oh, well, I just spilled it. <laughs> Into the oven it goes. This is the perfect example why I like having my own homemade convenience items in the freezer, because I just whipped up a quiche in less than, I don't know, that maybe was five minutes total, 10 minutes tops, and it has a homemade crust and homegrown eggs. I did have to shred the cheese, and I did have to grind some black pepper. I got half of it ground, I'm gonna grind the rest of it up. Then I'm gonna get this kitchen clean. And I'm gonna call this a successful day. I wonder if this is a different variety of black pepper, because it was a lot harder to grind than it normally is. It just took a little bit Oh, I'm breathing in that pepper. It just took a little bit longer, which is fine. I just wonder if it's a different variety. Then I just take a canning lid that I've used already to can with, put a lid on it, and there's black pepper for the next few months. Okay, friend, time to tackle this kitchen. Let's get this kitchen clean. I wanna get these eggs back in the fridge. I wash these eggs, that's why they're in the fridge. I need to get the beef in the refrigerator to thaw. I think what I'm gonna do is wash out this bowl and I'm gonna put the steaks in here to thaw in the fridge. 
so if they leak at all, then they'll be in a container in the fridge. This is what we're working with when it comes to this counter. Not too bad of a mess, but there's definitely things that need to be taken care of in the fridge. This is my favorite way to thaw meat if I think about it in time. Do I usually think about thawing meat in time to just throw it in the fridge for a few days? No. If I don't do it this way, then the cold water method is my next favorite, but I like that I was on top of it and I got that in the fridge to thaw. Oh, I am going to try, I thought myself, some of this beeswax wrap. And I've been loving it so far. One of the things I wanted to try to use it with is cheese. So I usually wrap my cheese up, block cheese like this, in saran wrap. And I thought if I could use bees wrap, bees wax wrap instead, then that would be just a little less plastic use that I use in my life, which is something that I always strive for. Am I perfect? No, I use saran wrap today. But if I can reduce one piece right here, that's awesome. I can link this down below if you're interested in it. It's kind of cool because it heats up with the warmth of your hands, and so you can really get it to stick. If you want it to stick on the side of the bowl, you just push it, and the heat of your hands kind of warms the wax up, and you can kind of get a pretty good seal. I used it this weekend with potato salad, and it was fantastic. But you can see I do use saran wrap. I'm not perfect. I'm just on the journey to try to reduce my plastic waste if I can, and when I can, and when it's practical. I'm really excited about those rolls. I think that they are, if I can get a good recipe down and I can share it with you, I'm going to be super excited because that could be a game changer for a lot of us if we can have homemade rolls in the freezer ready to go whenever we want them. Like I mentioned before, I do pie crust like that, pizza dough, and biscuits, and they are fabulous. So if I can get a sandwich bread recipe, a roll recipe, and a French bread recipe, that would be even better if we could have all of those. And then maybe one day I could branch into trying, well, I don't know if I would ever go through the effort of bulk making homemade croissants to put in the freezer. but. I know that that can be done because you can buy frozen croissants in the freezer section, but one thing at a time, right? While I have the counter messy, I might as well go ahead and get my flour filled up from my bulk container. I like to keep scoops in these. That right there, I just spilled that. That's why I like to do this when I have the kitchen messy because if I'm gonna wipe the counter down, I might as well just have to wipe it one time, right? So what I do is I keep two of these big bulk flour containers. I keep one upstairs and one downstairs. When the one upstairs gets empty, I bring it downstairs and then I bring the one that's downstairs upstairs and then I refill the empty one downstairs. That way, when I buy another bag of bulk flour, that way I'm constantly rotating through my bulk storage and nothing is sitting too long. I'm itching to get outside, the weather is stunning out there right now. We are in for a heat wave. It's gonna be, I think, 65 today, and then 70 tomorrow, and then in the high 80s. I think it's supposed to be even be in the 90s. So we're kind of skipping spring a little bit and going straight to summer, which is not like us typically. In Southwest Washington, we usually have good four seasons, but this year, I don't know if we're skipping spring or what, but it's getting hot. Keep 
quiche is still in the oven. The kitchen is mostly clean. I still have two dishes in the sink that I could wash. I have my pasties thawing. And I think what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna go run and I'm gonna go plant a bunch of plants. I think it's the perfect time to go ahead and do that. I should probably though get something to drink before I go out there. I wanna get all of my squash in the ground. My summer and winter squash, I wanna get my melons and cucumbers and oh black beans and some more peas and all oh, the corn i almost forgot about the corn the thing that i am almost the most excited about is getting some corn in the ground so i'll show you what that quiche looks like coming out of the oven i should set a timer for probably let's set a timer for 30 minutes and then i'll come in and check on that because if i don't set a timer it'll be crisp <laughs> when I come back in and or if I remember it about it. So let's do 30 minutes. My quiche, because I do such a big quiche, it usually takes a solid 45 minutes to an hour to cook. I don't usually time it. I just wait till it's done. So I'll see you when the quiche is done. And soon enough, the veggies in our quiche are going to be coming straight from the garden, which couldn't come quick enough. I'm so excited that this is the time of year we are in. I'm super excited about the recipe testing we were able to get to today. It's, I've got a lot more work on my end, but this is the beginning of recipe testing. So if you kind of wanted to see a little bit behind the scenes of how recipes are tested, I think yeast recipes are one of the harder ones as opposed to like a cooking recipe. A baking recipe is a little bit more challenging, but it's super fun and exciting. And I hope you kind of enjoyed seeing that. I will bring you along as we continue to test out these freezer rolls and see if we can perfect josh is home we're gonna sit down and eat some dinner and i just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me if you enjoyed this i can pop a couple of my other videos here you can go enjoy between now and my next upload if you want to make those one hour dinner rolls and just make them i can link that recipe down below so don't forget to check out the description box i hope you are having a fantastic day and i can't wait to see you next time bye friend